What's up, beautiful people? It's your boy, Joshua Martin, and I am finally doing this review, the SLR Magic Anamorphic Lenses. So let's jump right into it. Before I get started, I just want to say thank you to SLR Magic. They did loan me all three of their anamorphic lenses for Micro Four Thirds and I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. So shout out to you guys, thank you. All right, so this is how it's gonna go. I'm gonna give you all the details and facts about the lenses, and then I'm gonna boil it down to my opinion because I have been using these lenses for the past couple months, actually uh, almost half the year because I've had them since NAB. The timestamps are in the description below if you, wanna, if you just wanna go right to my opinion and my final thoughts, uh, you can do that. But uh, let's just jump right into it. These are anamorphic lenses for micro four thirds. They are two times crop and they come in 35, 50, and 70 millimeter. Now, if you don't know anything about anamorphic lenses, I will put links in the description about the history and the different types of anamorphic lenses that are out there. So please feel free to check that out. And like I mentioned before, these lenses are a two times squeeze. So on a four by three sensor like the GH5, you will retain more information on the horizontal plane left and right and you will achieve an aspect ratio of 2.66.1 and eventually you will crop it to the 2.39 aspect ratio. All three anamorphic lenses are the same height and weight, which is good because if you have this on a rig, you can always switch them out and you, you won't have to change anything about your setup. The T-stop range is varied across each lens. At as wide as T-stop, the 35 is T2.4, the 50 is T2.8, and the 70 millimeter is T4 and they all close down to T16. All three lenses have a minimum focus distance of three and a half feet roughly to infinity. The focus barrel is at the front of each lens and they all protrude as they focus from near to far. And they also feature an 82 millimeter thread mount in the front of each lens. So let's talk about distortion and field of view and I'm gonna nerd out for a little bit. So we all know that the GH5 has a two times crop factor, meaning whatever lens you put on it, you have to multiply by two and that will be your effective field of view. So a 35 millimeter will, will essentially be a 70 millimeter in terms of field of view. With anamorphics, you actually have to divide the lens focal length by the crop sensor. One of the reasons being is that since you are squeezing more information from the horizontal sides, once you de-squeeze it, you're retaining all the information. So eventually it changes the effective field of view. That is not a very scientific definition. Correct me if you can word it much better in, this, in the comments below. So that being said, the 35 millimeter anamorphic lens is actually a 17.5 millimeter field of view. So you're going to notice a lot of distortion. No edges on the corners are going to be straight. They're going to be bow as you've never seen it before. I do have a little trick to kind of compensate for the wide field of view and the distortion. And I've mentioned this, mentioned this many times before in my other videos. One of my favorite features on this camera, the GH5, is the X Tele converter. And essentially, this is a 1.4 crop into the center of the sensor on the camera. Say that five times fast. The 17 field of view becomes more of a 25 field of view. And it is a significant difference and it kind of helps maintain the edges. So when you move on to the 50 millimeter, you will see that it's a little bit more controlled and the effective field of view is a 25 millimeter lens. I personally really like the look of the 50. I think it has a great blend of both lenses, the 35 and the 70. It's wide enough, but you can really get some nice tight shots, even though that the three and a half feet minimum focus distance is a hindrance at times. So when you apply the 1.4 crop onto this lens, it essentially becomes a 35 millimeter equivalent. And then getting to the 70 mil, this is gonna be the most controlled, the least distorted look out of the three lenses, just because of all the compression that you're getting. But the compression, you, again, you're getting a field of view of roughly a 35 millimeter now. And again, you can apply that 1.4, you get tighter. So now these lenses become a little more versatile across the whole board. And yeah, I think that's a pretty cool feature that the GH5 can offer that not a lot of other cameras can offer. At the widest T-stop, all three lenses are quite soft and difficult to pull focus. 
This might be a problem for some who want to always shoot wide open or in low light, but if you're going for a more filmic look, a softer image can aid to the aesthetic. I think T4 is the sweet spot between all of the lenses, even though the 70mm I think is sharpest at T5.6. But experiment and find what look fits what your vision is. So when it comes to bokeh, I'm just going to actually let some test footage run and you be the judge of how it looks. Um, but each one, each lens does render their bokeh slightly different based on compression and distortion on the edges and all the other good stuff. Now flares. SLR Magic anamorphic lenses have a particular flare um, that you'll start to notice the more you use it. There's two types, of course. You know, you'll always have your horizontal blue flare. But there is this other flare when this light skims right across at the perfect angle with these lenses, you'll get a greenish and a more purple bluish uh, kind of rounded edge square. And you'll get that flare quite often if you don't have a matte box. Now, speaking of matte box, I'm going to do like a little segue here. Um, you know how I mentioned how the front of the lens protrudes? Well, that's kind of problematic when it comes to using a matte box. Now, SR Magic, they, they do offer a an attachment that goes on to the front so you can actually put your clamp matte box or a slide-in swing door matte box. Some other things to note about these lenses, all three other lenses do breathe, so expect that. It's not terrible, but it is noticeable. But another thing I noticed while using these lenses, especially on the 35, which is the only lens that shows vignetting. When applying a filter, it can be an ND filter or it can be just a regular Tiffin Black Pro Mist. You'll notice that the corners are darker when you have a filter on the lens. And that's only for the 35. Everything else is fine. But if you also apply that 1.4 crop, if you have a GH5, then you don't have to worry about that. And you can also crop in post. Overall, I really enjoy using the SLR Magic anamorphic lenses. They produce some amazing imagery that rival other anamorphics on the market. You do have to put some work into these lenses to make the image look how exactly what you want, but I personally like that process. The build quality is solid, though the focusing barrel is annoying, so the running gun type style that some of you might want to do might be a little slower than you would like, just because the focus ring is such a long throw, and like I said before, shooting wide open can become a little cumbersome when trying to focus. My advice to you, if you want to do some type of running gun, at least have a few shots in mind so you can have something to plan for to get the shot that you exactly need. The pricing of these lenses are mid-tier, but you could go with something a little bit cheaper like the Helios with a projector anamorphic adapter. But if you're like me, you want to jump right into it without any of the hassle of building your own anamorphic setup, even though it can be fun, this will be your best solution. I think SLR Magic is making great moves when it comes to making anamorphic adapters or lenses for the market. So I say take advantage of it now.